Hello everybody, if you're at all interested in cars, both of these will have been on your radar at some point. There's the Japanese high revving superstar here, and there is the Brit king of handling, the Elise. So, what I thought I'd do today is um, my friend JM, who most of you will probably know, has got a fantastic S2000. I have never driven one of these, but it's a car that uh, I've always wanted to own. Just for the engineering itself, I think it's, it's a car that's so interesting. The engine revs to 9,000. It, it's the kind of car that cannot be made in modern times. Similarly, the Elise is a car that I always, always wanted to own. And indeed, I do own this absolutely pristine example. Uh, if you're interested in finding out more about the Frankenlees, then have a look at my other videos. Um, but basically, this is a car that I sort of rescued from the, the scrapper. Now the question is, both these cars have pluses or minuses, but did I do the right thing buying the Elise? And if you're on, in the market for a really nice sort of roadster or a little sports car, which of these two should you choose? In terms of values, the Elises are probably a little bit higher now. The S1s in particular has, have crept up, but if you're looking at some of the other Elises, they're roughly in the same ballpark as the S2000 and even the S1s, you can buy them. You know, maybe there's a bit of difference, but it, it's not huge. I think the first thing we have to look at is practicalities before we take them for a drive. And there is absolutely no question that this is gonna be more practical. For a start, um, I think let's take the roofs off and see how that goes. Unlike the MX-5, the only roof option on an S2000 is electric, but fortunately, it's very simple and quick to use. There are two clips, one on each side of the cabin, which you must disengage. That's very easy. And then it's just a matter of pressing a button. And you're done. Right, so on the Elise, it's, 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 it's probably gonna be quicker, actually. So here we go. So first you open the door and you get an Allen key, which is stored inside. Then you loosen these two spars. Look at that, it's just a pleasure to work on. Somehow, James, there is a snail. Literally, yeah. Big, yeah, come and have a look. There's a big snail coming up on the side of the car. Look at that, see, perfect design, mate. And voila, done. Oh, that is a pain, isn't it? Yeah. Mind you, once, once you've got the hang of it, it'll be... Pain. <laughs> came out I was a student at university and although it was a relatively cheap sports car for what it was I could never aspire to it so I've literally always 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 wanted one of these and finally my dream has come through it has been it has been a tricky thing because basically this car had a few issues with the chassis so I bought it originally in January, but I haven't been able to drive it up until now. But oh my God, now that I have been driving it, I can tell you, I absolutely love it. I mean, in terms of just driving, it's just, I, I, it's in, I can't describe how good it is to drive. You don't even have to drive it that fast. It's, it's just awesome. Now the thing about it is, for me, that makes it quite so special, obviously, is the incredible level of feel that you just won't get in any other car. Uh, maybe this side short of a Caterham. It's the way it just feels like it's kind of pivoting in the middle. Um, so, you know, the often used term is go-kart and so on, but in some ways, this feels nicer than a go-kart. Um, it's so lithe, so delicate. It's just amazing. If you haven't tried an Elise, you have to. The downside of it is, obviously, you'll have seen earlier the comparison between, and this is just an indication of what it's like to live with each car, is the comparison on how quick it is to take the roof on and off. It's so fiddly on this. Some of the later Elises, the S2s, uh, the S3s and so on, they had a much easier little short 
roof covering, which, which is a lot better than this, frankly. But the moment you get to a bend, it just becomes completely worthwhile because there's nothing quite like an Elise. There really isn't. I decided to go for the S1 myself because I'll be completely honest, it's, I've always, A, it was the one that I longed for when I was a student, but B, I just always loved the way they looked. And the later ones, I do like the look of, but they, they, they just, they lost some of that 90s feel with the slimmer headlights. I really like the cowled round headlights on this. And um, yeah, so this particular car, it has the BBC engine in it. So it doesn't have the original 118 horsepower engine it's got the 145 horsepower k-series vvc and i have to tell you there's a lot of naysayers on the k-series but i personally think it suits these cars absolutely perfectly It revs to seven and a half thousand. This, the Frankenlees has a flat spot from about three and a half to five. I don't know why that is. It could be the homebrew, well, it's not homebrew, but the intake system isn't the standard one. It's a sort of cone filter that sucks up the hot air. Could be that it needs to be fiddled with, I don't know. But all the same, it loves to rev and it is quite uncultured, but it just it just suits it it makes it feel like a little race car they're actually a lot more comfortable than you would think the ride is pretty good obviously it can't deal with the bigger bumps there's there's really no way that it could um, but the low frequency stuff it deals with really well oh bit of rain coming in now i am on 10 year old toyo proxies so the wet is not my friend. Um, I am looking to change them before I get a raft of comments about that, but I haven't had a chance yet. Gearbox is one of the weak points. I've already done a little bit of work to this one to try and improve it. Um, they're not brilliant, um, but it's not terrible. You can get a short shifter, um, but it makes it incredibly too short shift in my view. Um, third to fourth is really nice. Uh, it's second that can be a little bit iffy, changing to second from first or third down to second. Um, but it's completely usable. It's not brilliant. I know that the S2000 is renowned for having a brilliant gear change, so I'm expecting a lot from that, James. I think the original designer of the Elise said it was like a Ducati for the road. And I can completely see what he's saying. There's just nothing which is as pure as an S1 Elise. You won't find it because it doesn't exist. The, the, the level of feel, the way it, you know, the lightness, it's just, it wouldn't be possible. Considering that I like the Franken Lees quite so much, you might be forgiven for thinking that I'm going to be a bit biased in this review, but I promise you I'm not. I'm going to give that S2000 a proper chance, and I already know that there are lots of things that it does an awful lot better than this. Um, but I can also tell you, it's not going to give back the same kind of handling feel. It just can't. I think they're 1,250 kilos. It cannot compare in that way to a a car that weighs 700 kilos. <laughs> wow, in the twisties, this is just pretty much unbeatable. A special welcome to all the Honda fans who might not normally visit my channel. Um, first of all, 
I can tell you that getting into an S2000 after an Elise is literally like, and I'm not exaggerating here, it's like getting into a Rolls Royce. The carpets are so plush. My feet feel sort of cushioned even on the floor by the pedals. The interior is absolutely lovely. I think it's it's a really nice thing and it's aged really well. That, that, that sort of um, electronic speedo display is amazing. I think it's fantastic. And apparently it's supposed to mirror the McLarens, uh, the F1 cars at the time. And it does definitely remind me a bit of those controls. Um, so generally, what a lovely place to be, which is a great start. Straight away, that gearbox, which I know has a reputation, um, but it is really lo uh, rather lovely. This has a tiny, tiniest bit of play in it. I think maybe the linkages could uh, do with being looked at, but the action is so short, so quick. Um, it's, it's really, really nice. Um, you can tell straight away, even at these lower speeds, you can't get away from the inertia. This weighs 1,250 kilos, so um, almost double what the Elise weighs, and you can feel it. Now, because the Elise is a dedicated sports car, and also mine had the benefit of the VVC engine, so more power, it's raining, so, but I refuse to get the roof up. Um, because of that, also, it's quite fitting that this particular car also has a helping hand. So, it has a full set of Olin's road and track, and all the bushes are polybushed, and it also has OZ a, a, a Leggerita wheels, um, which I think some of the lightest wheels you can get. But the party piece is undoubtedly the engine, so let's see what it can do. Now, James is fond of saying that this was Honda's birthday present to itself 50 years. There's a real uplift around 7,000 revs. It goes all the way to nine. Um, one thing that I would say, I know this is the car's party piece, really, is the engine, but it's it's way too muted, uh, especially for an engine that does that level of, you know, has that level of rev, that is so rev happy. Um, it doesn't actually sound particularly nice. I think James is going to do something with the exhaust to get something more out of it and I think that's just, otherwise it just feels a bit wasted. I think it's no accident that Honda also make motorbikes, it's, uh, you can definitely trace the lineage to that also handles really well. I think at the time, one of the criticisms was there wasn't enough feel, enough steering feel. And um, I can kind of see where they were coming from. This car, even with the upgraded suspension and the poly bushes, should probably be a bit better than a normal one. Um, but steering feel is a bit masked. It's fine though, it's got the right sort of speed. Um, it's, not, it's not terrible, but it's just not, it's not, yeah, it's not, it's not the best steering feel out there. The brakes are sharply over-servoed for my tastes, and that's the case with most modern cars. It, it, it's really nice to hustle down a road like this. And um, I think if you're looking at the alternatives, I don't know what it would be, an MX-5? I know it's a bit silly to compare this to, a, to an Elise, but I guess that my thinking is that, well, the Elise isn't a usable everyday car. Can you get close to getting the sensations that an Elise gives you with a car which is more usable and that has its own... And that has its own particular sort of pluses, i.e. this amazing revving engine. And I think the answer to that is, no, you can't. Um, I really do like this and I would consider getting one myself if I needed a usable car. Um, but the problem is this is a two-seater and, well, I don't know, for me anyway, I need something that has a bit more space as my usable daily, which is why I have the Alpha GTA. 
Um, if you needed a usable two-seater, then yeah, it's great. But in terms of the, the feel and the emotions that you get, I don't mean feel, no, it can't touch. It can't really, it doesn't get close to the S1. It's great, it really is. Um, but it doesn't feel part of you in the same way as the S1 does. And before all you Honda guys crucify me, I do really like the car, but it's just that I guess you're never going to be able to compete with something that weighs 700 kilos. Uh, on the other hand, you really could have one of these and use it all year round. Um, you could do that with the, uh, with the Elise, um, but you, it would make you pay for it day in, day out. The water leaking in when it's raining, the noise, the heat when it's hot leaking through. Um, but my God, on any road really that has bends on it, it is absolutely unbeatable. I've just pulled over quickly because it was raining quite hard. Now it has stopped. But um, just a, a couple of thoughts, really, because um, I've been driving the S2000 a little bit longer. And um, I think it, it it's actually surprised me a little bit because I feel like it's a missed opportunity. I think that what I love about this car is the engineering and the sort of the, the typical sort of Honda madness that they have every few years where they come out with something quite crazy. The car itself is incredibly well engineered. I mean, the chassis feels really stiff for an open top car of this era. The engine revs to 9,000. It's got, it's really well thought out, but it doesn't 100% translate on the road as the car is at the moment. Now this already has the suspension sorted and that's gonna make a big difference, but there's two main ingredients for me that are just missing before I will really love this car. And that is the first is that you just sit too high. And initially I thought it's because I'd come in from the Elise, but in actual fact, it's not that. You do actually just sit too high for an open top sports car. So some, some bucket seats, nothing too uncomfortable, too extreme, but some bucket seats that will lower the driving position by maybe about an inch will transform it. Uh, and also you will get a lot more feel from, from the car itself, which will help the fact that the steering doesn't give you a huge amount of feel. And then the second thing is that engine noise. It's all well and good that it revs to 9,000, but it's just too thrashy at the top end to really enjoy it. James, I know, is putting some different manifolds on this car, and he's doing some other bits and mods, and I think he's got some throttle bodies as well, and I think that will completely transform it and will bring its potential up to 100. Um, as it is at the moment, I really do like it. I'm glad I've driven it. But I just think it just feels like a bit, overall, it feels like a bit of a missed opportunity for Honda. I know why they did it, but it's um, it's just a shame they didn't push it further. Did they ever do a Type R in one of these? I don't think they did. But if they did, I think that's the kind of car that I'd be looking for. This lovely S2000 has got 85,000 miles. It's probably in the best color. I do love what I think is called the burnt orange as well. Um, but anyway, it belongs to my mate JM. In case you have not seen his channel, do pop down. I will put the link in the description and it will pop up now as well. Um, he is an absolutely brilliant reviewer and a font of knowledge on all cars. So um, do go and visit his site. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, please do subscribe if you can bear to watch me. And uh, I really look forward to seeing you for the next one. And last thing is, if you want to contact me, then Instagram is the best way. Thanks and see you soon.